for immunohistochemistry, looking at PDL1, on the combination arm, PDL1 status didn't matter, but on the sunitinib arm, PDL1 positive patient did worse. That's consistent with our prior experience. With CD8, it's different, high CD8 uh, count, and that's at the invasion the invasive margin uh, was actually associated um, a high CD8 uh, positive uh, cells at the invasion margin um, were associated with better benefit in the combination arm and the opposite actually in the sunitinib arm. So that's actually uh, in a way was good and comforting because that was in line with what we thought would happen. Then we said you know, we had over 720 patients and we said, let us do our own gene expression analysis. We started with 4,000 genes and went down to 306 genes that had influence on immune response and then down to 26 genes that, ha that were part of, um, you know, some uh, T cell or NK cell or macrophage um, uh, response or Im Im immunology. And uh, we came up with this um, signature we call renal 101 gene expression signature. And that signature did distinguish um, in patients that have high expression, did distinguish patients that had a better progression-free survival, enriched for patients with better progression-free survival on the combination arm, didn't do anything with sunitinib. Then we had a data set from 55 patients from the phase 1b, same thing. If you look at this at, at this signature, it was it's enriched for the responder, so we had a validation set. And finally, we did what many people do, we did whole exome sequencing, 7,800 patients on both arms, and we came up with very interesting genes um, uh, like the NMT1, P10, and others that were associated with either better response on the combination arm or on the sunitinib uh, arm. So actually, these how we take this, we want to we wanna think about this not just as relevant to excitinib plus avulima, but to a TKI plus IO combination compared to TKI uh, only.